Today we will be solving this problem called grid paths. So consider an n by n grid whose squares may have traps. It is not allowed to move to a square with a trap. So our task is to calculate the number of paths from the upper left square to the lower right square where we only can move right or down. So n here uh, the size of our grid is up to 8000 and that makes sense because we would have an n by n grid here and we would require n square to just read our grid and we have to output the number of paths that go from the upper left square to the lower right square modulo a billion and seven and the fact that we have to output the answer modulo a billion and seven is an indicator that the answer will be very large. So let's go to the drawing board and try to come up with an answer. So this is our grid. We will start in this square and we will need to reach this square. So right off the bat we can notice a couple of things. If there is a trap in this square or this square then the answer is zero. So let's note that. So now that we made sure that our starting and finishing square do not contain traps, let's think about what it means to reach a certain square. So for example, if you are at this position, there are only two possible squares that you could have came from, namely this one and this one, because you can only move to the right or down. So if you are at this position and you made a move to the right in the previous move, this means that you came from the cell left to this one, which is this one. And if you used a move down, then you came from a cell up to this one, which is this one. So basically, if you are at this position, then the number of ways of reaching this square will be equal to the number of ways of reaching this square plus the number of ways of reaching this square. And the same will apply to all other square. And to visualize this better, let's draw a tree representing the moves we can make. So I went ahead and gave indices to all these squares in the y and x direction, zero indexed indices and I represented all the cells as being nodes here. So our goal is to reach this end cell which is at position 3, 3. Then I will go ahead and draw edges representing the valid moves. So if I am at position 3, 3, then I could have came from two cells, either 3, 2 or 2, 3. But since there is a trap in the cell 2, 3, then I couldn't have used that cell and uh, more precisely, any cell that contains a trap will not have any edges going into it or coming out of it. So my only possible move is to have came from this. And now I'll move on to this cell. If I am at two, 3, 2, then I could have came from 3, 1 or 2, 2. So again, I'll draw these edges. And I will not uh, process 2, 3 because it contains a trap. Next is 3, 1, so this cell, if I am at this position, I could have came from 3, 0, but it contains a trap, or I could have came from 2, 1, so I'll draw an edge between 3, 1 and 2, 1. And moving on to 2, 2, so I could have came from 2, 1 or from 1, 2. And both these squares do not contain traps, so I'll draw edges to both of them. And now 1, 3, I could have came from 1, 2 or 0, 3. Since both cells are empty, I will draw edges to both of them. And now I'll move on to 3, 0. 3, 0 contains a trap, so I will not process it. Then 2, 1, I could have came from 2, 0 or from 1, 1. And 1, 1 contains a trap as well, so I'll just add an edge to 2, 0. Moving on to 1, 2, I could have came from 1, 1 or from 0, 2. Since 1, 1 contains a trap, I will only draw an edge to 0, 2. Now I'll process 2, 0, which is this cell. And here I can I could have only came from the cell 1, 0. So I'll draw an edge to it since it does not contain a trap. Moving on to 1, 1. It contains a trap, so I'll not process it. And now moving on to 0, 2. 
for the cell 0 to here I could have only came from cell 0 1 so I'll draw an edge to it and now cell 1 0 I could have only came from cell 0 0 so I'll draw an edge to it and for 0 1 I'll also draw an edge to 0 0 now I'll go ahead and count the number of edges that go into each node so into this one goes one edge and into this one as well one 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 here and notice that two edges go into this node and two edges go into this node as well and finally for this node three edges go into it and that's why our answer is three because three edges go into this node and if I follow this path, I could retrace the three paths I could take so I can go from 0, 0 to 1, 0 to 2, 0 to 2, 1 to 3, 1 and to 3, 2 and 3, 3 I could have also chosen another path when I got to 2, 1 I could have went to 2, 2 and then 3, 2 then 3, 3 and the last path will be chosen in this direction instead so I'll go 0, 1, 0, 2 one two 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 three two and finally three three and as you can notice here the answer for this node will depend on this node and this node and the coordinates of this node are three three while the coordinates of this node are three two and two three and what i am pointing at here is that the coordinates of these nodes are smaller than the coordinates of this node so basically we're gonna use dynamic programming to calculate the answer starting from the bottom up and since each node only depends on nodes whose coordinates are smaller than, than this node then I can just start from 0 0 and go all the way to the right then move on a one row then go all the way to the right and so on so this is our first encounter with two-dimensional dynamic programming and it is two-dimensional because each one of our states has two values that define it. So in order to keep track of the number of ways to reach each node, I will represent it by using a two-dimensional array that I call dp for example, where the first value corresponds to the x coordinate and the second value corresponds to the y coordinate and i will start with the, the initial condition which is that dp of 0 0 will be equal to 1 if a cell is empty and 0 if has trap and then i will process all the cells in this order i will go right 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 then i'll move on to this cell then go right 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 and then move on to this cell and go right 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 and so on i could have also went down 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 and then move on to this cell and then go down 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 the only thing that i have to pay attention to is transition and this is a very important concept in dynamic programming and basically what this means is that I need to have all the state that my current state depends on ready by the time I process my current state and going right 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 then down and right 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 then down and so on guarantees that I will have my state ready when I transition to the next state then after initializing the dp of 0 0 at each position dp ij I will just add dp of i minus 1 j plus dp of i j minus 1 and of course I need to make sure that these indices are within bounds and so on so a word about complexity here I will visit all the cells I have in my grid and there are n squared of them and for each one I will update the dp using this operation which is done in all of one so my total complexity would be on n square and since n is only up to 8000 n square will be only up to 10 to the 6th which is smaller than our threshold of 10 to the 8th so let's go ahead and check out our code so this is our program we'll start by reading n then I will declare a vector of string to store my grid then I will read the n lines 
Then I will declare a vector of vector of long longs to store the number of paths that go from uh, the upper left corner to any cell and I will initialize it with zero. Then I will have the initial condition for my DP. As we said, the number of paths at zero, zero will be either one if the cell is empty or zero otherwise. And this expression here will, be, will evaluate to one if the cell is empty and to zero otherwise. Then I will look through all my rows and for each row I would look through all the columns from left to right and if my cell is empty, that is if grid at position i, j is different from star then I will check the cell uh, that is up from it in position i minus 1 and if it is empty as well, I will update the number of paths at position i, j with the number of paths at position i minus 1, j and I will do the same thing with the cell that came to its left. So if j minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 and that cell is empty, I will update the number of paths at ij with the number of paths at i j minus 1. And at the end, the value at uh, position n minus 1, n minus 1 will actually count the number of paths that go from the upper left corner to the lower right corner. So that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and submit. So that worked. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.